Thank you very much. I'm delighted to be here with Director Donovan and Senator Schumer and Senator McCaskill. And uh, we've heard it from our top military commanders, our intelligence officials, the business community leaders. Sequestration is a threat to our economy and our national security. We need a sensible, balanced approach to address this issue. And that means bipartisan leadership to end the job-killing sequestration cuts for both domestic and defense spending. Simply put, Congress has to pursue a much smarter, more responsible approach to budgeting. And I just came this morning, and Senator McCaskill is there also from the Armed Services Committee. We had Admiral Gortney of U.S. Northern Command and General John Kelly of U.S. Southern Command. Now, NORTHCOM is responsible for the defense of the homeland. Ad Admiral Gortney is a warfighter. His mission is to protect the United States, but he made it very clear. He can't do that without the FBI, the Coast Guard, which is the Department of Homeland Security, and many, many others. And so even if we're able to provide some relief for defense, if we don't relieve these other agencies, the mission of NORTHCOM will be compromised. General Kelly made a very, very uh, significant point. They have the ability to track tons and tons of cocaine and drugs coming out of South America and Central America, but they don't have the Coast Guard cutters and the associated helicopters to interdict those ships. They're seeing this avalanche of drugs come into the country, and they can't do that. And that's not DOD, that's the Department of Homeland Security. And it's DEA agents on the ground giving them the intel, along with the State Department, that allows them to get this picture. So this is not just a, we need a scientific base and we need, you know, strong, you know, young people able to go in the military. On a day-to-day -day basis, we need both defense and non-defense agencies funded. The best, most pithy, most blunt way this was said was by General Jim Mattis, former CENTCOM commander, the only way a Marine speaks, you do, don't fund the State Department fully, then I need to buy some more ammunition. <laughs> and that's the truth. So every senior civilian and military leader has come before us and made the point very eloquently and very succinctly and very <laughs> tangibly, this has to be reversed. Yeah. If sequestration goes through, it'll be damaging, it'll be counterproductive, It'll hurt readiness for our military, modernization, and it'll also impact the welfare of the men and women who wear the uniform and serve and sacrifice so well for us. And as Chuck has said, then you also look at the impact across our economy in terms of programs like education, research, Head Start. Those are going to be de devastating also. And I must say also, too, is, you know, we ask these young men and women to go out and sacrifice and serve, put this up Tom way. First, they do it for their comrades in arms. But second, they do it not for elaborate tax breaks for the wealthiest. They do it so everybody in this country gets a chance. So kids get to go to school. They get to be fed with SNAP. If you're laying your, your life down the line, it's not so, so people can have more. It's that everyone gets a chance. And we have to recognize that. Now, uh, we've got to make this uh, change. We have to do it. Uh, these cuts are not acceptable to the Department of Defense or domestic agency. We can't fix one side of the ledger without fixing the other. And I said it's not just because of infrastructure and long term. It's the day-to-day -day operation of the Department of Defense. Without Homeland Security, without FBI, without DEA, without a host of other agencies, they cannot simply perform their mission. So I hope we can come together with a principal agreement. And with that, let me introduce my colleague, Senator Claire McCaskill. Claire.